What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, JD. Thank you for viewing Coast to Coast Gamers. Today is Wednesday, August 7th. Um, hyped and ready to watch my actual Redskins team play uh, their first preseason game tomorrow against the Cleveland Browns to see how Dwayne Haskins do and Case Keenum. So, Cole McCoy will not be uh, playing the, the first preseason game. Uh, Jay Gruden said that he was going to sit down his starting quarterback out on the first first preseason game. Yes, Colt McCoy is the starting quarterback for right now. See how he looks out the preseason. But next, I want to thank all the, the new subscribers who subscribe to the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel, subscribing. Uh, I want to thank two, two uh, subscribers who actually commented on a couple of my videos. One is... Uh, Reared or Word NA64 is spelled W E R D N A 64. I want to thank you for commenting, saying good things about my video, and also Jay Crook. That's one of the subscribers who's actually been pushing out, going to actual friends uh, to ask them to subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. Thank you, Mr. Jay Crook. How I know that because I, I talked to the guy. At my job so anyways once again I want to thank all those people who subscribe to the channel thank you for viewing it and also for the very few keyword very few keywords been hitting that like button thank you I just need more of you guys that watch my uh, my videos to hit that like button I need that like button I need the views I need the like button and I also need the subscribers too so maybe I could start monetizing my videos. But I'm not in no hurry for that. But anyways, thank you for the support. Well, this is week eight. About to play the Minnesota Vikings. This will be the first time the Redskins uh, go up against their old quarterback, Kirk Cousins. So we're going to put a hurt locker on him. So don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. This is Let's do this. Man. Coach, thanks very much. Spread between 4th and 6th Streets in downtown Minneapolis, we welcome you inside spacious U.S. Bank Stadium. Tonight, we begin Week 8 with a good matchup for you here between the Washington Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And that'll bring up second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there. Need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 26 and a first down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. Yeah, that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. It went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. On first and ten, it's Haskins, eluding the pressure right. 
This one complete to Jordan Reed. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. That's going to set him back five yards. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. They give it to Peterson. He'll get three of those penalty yards back here, leaving him with a second and 12. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments and doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. On second and 12, Haskins sliding out of the pocket. Got a man, that's Quinn. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that. yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on there. Heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. Brandon, unless my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, that's the second time they've gone to him here on this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. Now the second year back from LSU, it's Darius Geis. And he'll get three down to the 34-yard line. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Third down, here's Haskins on the move to his left. The tally there, minus eight yards, leads to fourth down as well. So on fourth down, the Redskins will call on Tressway to punt it away. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. Let's go! And now out comes Minnesota. And they will begin with, should we call it, far from ideal starting field position, their own two-yard line. So what's your definition of ideal? The one-yard line on the other side of the field. Yes, exactly right. So yes, your definition is apropos in this case. In on the stop, Mason Foster, who was seventh in the NFL in tackles a year ago. And while they hope to continue this drive, it's really already mission accomplished. They've given enough space now that they have to pump the ball. They've done so with that first run. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Charles, Thursday night game. I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? It's a, Who are the freshest guys coming any time you hand the ball to a back? And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Redskins with the football, but trailing here as we get down to the good stuff. Quarter number four. From the gun, Haskins on third down. And he fires one, but incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Now it's Haskins. Flush to his right. And he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. Josh Doxson. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Redskins have made this a one-score game. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that will get him one closer. 
Just a four-play drive that time. And it was polished off by a Redskin touchdown. So the lead shaved to two now as the kickoff is away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you, and it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start, but he's found a way so far here in the second half. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Trying to go back again to Adam Thielen, and it's second down. How about the defensive effort from both of these teams that we've seen in this game? Would you say it's like a high-stakes chess match right now? Uh, chess is one way to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like it. Okay, the only reason I say that, you feel like they're contemplating their moves before actually making one and none of them being done very confidently. Truth be told, I've never played chess, and I know that I'm not smart enough to play chess. Guys like you with your IQ, you can pull that off. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And it'll be Redskins football now with a first and 10. The Redskins offense now, they get set to take over here. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. And this will be caught at the 30. The first play of the second half, a big success, over 30 yards. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And down inside the 15 he goes. The Washington passing game dialed in now. It's a first down. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? And he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. Adrian Peterson scoring a touchdown against his former mates. And the Redskins have taken the lead. There it is, partner. You see it. Four fingers. What does that four mean? Fingers. That, four, that signifies the fourth quarters here. That's right. Who's going to dominate? Usually both teams are holding them up. We own the fourth quarter, what we found out so far. Two touchdowns here, and now they've taken the lead. Yeah, second one putting them in front. You know what I see on the other sideline, though? It seems like they've tensed up, had that lead. They were playing not to lose it, and they've lost it. That's a great observation. When you play not to lose, you usually don't win. Now, though, they'll have the opportunity to respond. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. We got this. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
Give him nine there on the first down completion. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Kirk Cousins last year started all 16 games, but only led the Vikes to just one fourth quarter comeback like he's trying to do here. Cook. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. The tackle by Matthew Ioannidis. If you're going to run against this unit, especially down here, just beware. I mean, they're the top rushing defense. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Amir Abdullah, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Vikings are going to retake the lead. So now here are the Vikings faced with a big two-point conversion attempt. Cousins to throw it. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, yeah, when to go for chart. one. I do love it. It helps you with your decision-making during heated times. And just look at it right here in this part, point of the game. Go for two, try to make it a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. Both teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and 10. Here's Haskins to throw, and he slings one that's incomplete. Jordan Reed was the intended target, and now it's second down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. 23 yards the pick up there, and now they're in the hurry up. Now a big spot for the rookie, Haskins. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. On, Let's go. So it's Redskin football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. The tackle made there by Harrison Smith. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. Escaping the pressure right. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. On first down, this is Geis. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Now it's Haskins. They'll roll him out right. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back. And and, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Ron Parker. Well, I don't think we'll have to look very hard to find our play of the game. That was an absolutely monstrous big play right there. Backs to the wall. The offense has it in the red zone, driving for the winning score. And he says, not on my watch. And that is one happy bunch on the sidelines. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a game of three. The Redskins now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. 
Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. The Vikings on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and nine. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. The Redskins going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. And they'll indeed take a knee. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. And how about this finish? Able to take a knee, run out the clock, and close this game out by one point. You talk about <laughs> how, many, how many coaches we talked to. They all said to say, all I want to do is win by yep. one point. That got tested in this one. Yep, and that cliche rings true. A single penny separates this one. So the final six uh, away. I don't know to tell you guys, victory. but I am seriously thinking about sitting down past you. He throws two wide open wide receivers. Yeah, really he overthrows out, two wide open receivers. Every snap one of them could have been a touchdown. They had to win at the line and then instead of him field, actually throwing the ball up high enough so the other receiver can get it, he throws an interception in the end zone. We've heard that a million times, right? Ben, on top of that, tough. let's talk Those about Adrian Peterson the fumbles the ball the in the first half so for Minnesota, they near the, this near the end zone. A very solid six and two. And now they'll have a few extra uh, days here before they face wow. Kansas Anyways, City next week. Hope you guys liked well it. For Washington. Mm -hmm. I sure enough didn't, now but I hope you liked it. And Just remember now. to subscribe, and try to get hit that like button, next week as leave a comment, Park to take and I'll put up week, Bills. week nine where the Redskins play the Buffalo Bills. With that, you guys take care. Peace.